Well, tonight we are going to be dealing with the last half of the tribulation period. This, this part of the tribulation period is called the Great Tribulation. The first three year, three and a half years is, is the tribulation, but the last three and a half years is the Great Tribulation. So in the middle of the week, we call it a week, it is seven years, so it's years instead of days. In the middle of those years, the seven, three and a half years, the Antichrist will break his covenant with the Jewish nation, and that will be the end. He will not only break his covenant, he, he does that at the beginning, technically he breaks the covenant, but in the middle of the tribulation week, he begins to really change the focus of everything in a powerful way, an evil powerful way. He will exalt himself to be worshiped as God fully and, and uh, freely. So uh, the scripture says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. This is talking about the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be a man who is going to be possessed and controlled by the devil. He's going to be controlled by demon spirits on this planet. And many will be fooled. The spirit of deception is going to be rampant. You know, right now, uh, you know, the, the thing that I've said so several times about people that are in politics, how do I know they're lying? Their lips are moving. That's what I say. Because over and over and over and over again, so many politicians just don't mind telling you whatever they want you to believe. It doesn't matter what the truth is. The truth has become irrelevant. You know, there, there, there are people that believe that whatever they think is the truth is truth. So your truth, you got a truth and I got a truth. But that's not how it is. The Bible is truth. And what God said is truth. I don't care if it's me that says contrary to that, or if it's a politician that says contrary to that, or a news media person that says contrary to that. Truth is established by God. The Bible says he is truth. God is truth. And everyone else is a liar. If you don't speak what God says, then you're a liar. That's what the scripture tells us. So therefore, during the tribulation period when the Antichrist comes, we're gonna be perfectly, not we, I'm not gonna be here, but people are going to be perfectly comfortable with lies. Because most people would rather believe a lie than the truth. Come on. You know, my dad used to tell the story of a man who, who was, all of his congregation was sleeping on him and halfway not listening to his sermon, so he just stopped in the middle of a sermon. He said, on the way to work, on the way to church this morning, he said, I saw a mama pig coming out on the road in front of my car. And said, that wasn't, that wasn't so weird, but she had a big old horn coming out the front of her nose. And he said, and you know what? He said, that wasn't all that bad, but there was a whole line of little bitty pigs coming right along behind her, and they all had a big horn coming out their nose too. And he looked at them, they were all looking straight at him. He said, well, said that wasn't the truth at all, but I've just proved you'd rather listen to a lie than the truth. <laughs> so we just rather listen to a lie sometimes because it makes us feel good. Come on, it makes us feel good. And so we like a feel good attitude. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't want anybody to tell me something's gonna send me to hell. I don't want anybody to tell me something that's gonna make me regret that I believed a lie. So the Antichrist is gonna be uh, this man of perdition possessed of the devil who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. This is the Antichrist. That all that is called God or that is worshipped, so it doesn't matter what it is that you worship after, during this period of time, so that he as God, and that's a capital letter G, that means he's making himself to be the real God, as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So he's going to enter into the Jewish temple. He will cause the Jewish sacrifices to cease, which he is allowed to happen during the first half of the tribulation. But in the middle of that week, he is going to cause all of that to cease. 
and he's going to exalt himself as God and refuse to allow anybody to worship anybody else or anything else except him. So at this time, the Jews are told to leave Jerusalem. Matthew 24, 15, and 21, the words of the Lord says, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, that's when the Antichrist sets up his throne in the, in the temple, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take a thing out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are, that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray that, you, that your flight be not in the winter, neither on Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. This last three and a half years of the tribulation is going to be so far beyond our comprehension of horrible, evil, uh, demonic forces bringing such destruction, death, and, and problems that our minds really cannot really fathom what all of this is going to be like. It's going to be horrible uh, beyond anything that the world has ever known. We've known some terrible things. I'm sure the people in Turkey and Syria would think they're going through some horrible times right now. With, their, with the world shaking, they're still shaking over there. There's still earthquakes going on over there. Uh, and, and so I'm sure with all those buildings, like over a thousand buildings uh, that were like uh, tall buildings, eight, 10, 12 story buildings just falling to the ground all around them and people being crushed by all this going on over there and the earth opening up uh, over there. I'm sure that something in their mind makes them feel like this is horrible. But you know what? And, and when the six million Jews were killed, I'm sure they thought, man, this could be the tribulation. But it's not because it has not happened yet and it's coming a time when it's going to be so bad the Bible says it's going to be trouble like the world has never seen before and never will see again after this event. In Daniel 12 and 1, the scripture says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even at that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So he's saying... This is going to be a time of trouble like there never has been. This is Michael, the archangel, standing to proclaim. This is going to be a time like there's never been before. But thank God, out of all this, there is going to be a remnant of Jews that will be saved and will be, uh, will be taken care of. And we'll get into that later as we get into the next section of this. But Jeremiah 30 and 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Now, the last half of the tribulation period, God is going to be dealing primarily with the Jewish nation. Now, it doesn't mean that no one else will suffer. You know, just the world is becoming, and, and at this time of the tribulation period, it will be a one world system. You know, we're seeing... Uh, we're seeing things moving in the direction of a one world system. There are people in, in uh, the background that are in authority, not voted in people, but people that are in more authority than we can even begin to imagine that are pushing the world toward this one world situation. That's why they prefer open borders to, not, to keeping the borders closed in the United States because they would like to have just this total one world system where there is no, uh, there's no um, nationalism. They hate nationalism. They hate the flag. They hate anybody who's waving the flag, who's saying, you know, I love America and all that. They hate that kind of thing because they really do want there to be just a one world system where there's no nations that are, uh, that are faithful to the nation. So consequently, this is building. I've told you before that the tribulation period and all these things that God is going to do is like birth pains that lead up. So you're not going to just 
boom, in one day everything's going to change. We are seeing the prog progression of these things happening that change the mind. So uh, things that we didn't accept 50 years ago, we easily accept now because that's what they do. The people in authority, if they tell you something long enough, you start believing it's true. And if they start with you when you're five and three and 10, then by the time you're an adult, you think that's truth. That's what they've done with this transgenderism and stuff. They started with children, making them think that, you know, children who get up in the morning and think they may be a turtle today. I think they may be a giraffe today, but now they're saying, if you think you might be another sex, then we can take care of that for you. At, even I heard a guy, I heard a woman on TV the other day saying even two and three year olds can choose their sex. God help us. So we're beginning at an earlier and earlier and earlier age teaching children things that are absolutely contrary. It ex all of this exalts itself against God. It exalts itself against God. What is that? The spirit of the Antichrist. All of this exalts itself against God. God, uh, God planned for men and women to marry and procreate to, to, uh, to populate the world. That's the plan of God. Families are the plan of God. And procreation is the plan of God. That's the plan of God. And so all of this is diabolically opposed to the plan of God. So that's the spirit of the Antichrist. Whatever God's plan is, we're going to change it to something contrary and opposite of that. Yeah. So that's what we're seeing happen in the world today. God help us. God help us send a revival. Help there to be repentance in this nation. Now, there is going to be a time limit for this great tribulation. It's not open-ended. It has a time limit, and that time limit is three and a half years. Revelation 13 and 5 says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. This is the power of the Antichrist. Blasphemings and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's how long this Antichrist is going to set himself up to be worshipped and to go into the, the temple and do all these things. That's his time limit. In three and a half years, uh, he's going to be taken care of. Daniel 7 and 25 says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. My goodness, do we see these things today? And they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Now the time is a year, times is, is, the, is two years, and then the dividing of time is a half a year. So that's three and a half years is the period of time that this horrible uh, man is going to have power and authority over the world and uh, uh, resist God so blatantly. So, uh, you know, there is a scripture in the Bible that says God will shorten the time. Have you ever wondered what that means? That if the time was not shortened, even the very elect, have you ever wondered about what, what that is? Well, that, uh, Matthew 24 and 21 and 22 says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved, but for the elect say, those days shall be shortened. Now, the, the studies that I saw concerning this is saying, like God, it's three and a half years, excuse me, there's not going to be a change in that during the process of everything. But in the past eons of time, God chose to shorten this three and a half year plan. So the plan was shortened by God before and has already been shortened. So it's a past event where God shortened the time to make it so that even the elect would not be lost. So God, uh, God certainly does work in the past. Now, so during this time, there has to be complete control. The Antichrist has to be in complete control. This is going to be a spirit that is all over the world. Now, I promise you the, the epitome of it all, the 
point of it all is going to be sh the shotgun barrel is going to be toward Israel. So that's where it's going to be. But it's going to ripple all over the whole world. And one of the ways it's going to ripple all over the whole world is that the mark of the beast is going to be uh, established in the middle of the tribulation period. Uh, Revelation uh, 13, 16 and 7 says, And he causeth all, this is the Antichrist, he causeth all, did y'all hear the word all? Not just Jews, <coughs> all. He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. This uh, mark is going to cause the Antichrist to have complete control over the monetary system. Because not only will you not be able to go to the grocery store and buy groceries, you will also not be able to have a business. Because in order to run a business, you have to be able to buy and sell. You, there's something you have to do. You have to, even if you're not in produce or products, you still have to, the exchange of money is required. And there'll be no exchange of money without the mark of the beast. I believe that it will not be paper money or any of that kind of stuff. It's going to be uh, internet money. It's going to be the swapping around of numbers <laughs> somehow or another. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how all that works. Trust me. I, I don't know anything about bitcoins and tell you the truth about it, don't come tell me after church because I don't want to know. <laughs> if you know, don't tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I have to pay my credit card. <laughs> but but regardless, this, this is going to be a monetary system like we've never known. It, something new that, you know, a bunch of you like to cash your check when you get it. Some of you like to cash your check. Mm -hmm, I know you do. Like to operate. <laughs> you have to operate with cash. You like to operate. But, you know, there are a lot of things now you can't do with cash. You can't. Uh, you can't buy an airline ticket with cash. Did you know that? There are a lot of things you cannot do. When you go to a foreign country, you better not just have cash. You better have a credit card if you're going to do any business overseas. So there are a lot of ways that things are lining up. And, you know, have you got your eyes open? There are banks that are crashing. Yeah. There are banks in America right now and around the world that are absolutely crashing. That's right. And, you know, governments can only hold things up so long. Pretty soon, it's going to be impossible if enough banks fail. Now, I'm not trying to put fear in your heart because just like we were talking about Christina, our hope is not in these things. Amen. Our hope is in the Lord. Amen. Our hope is in the Lord. And if we got him, that's what we should desire most is to know him and have him. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm just tempted to tell you tonight, I was watching before I was, while I was getting ready, I was watching a gun smoke. And this woman tried to steal another woman's hu husband. And the reason she wanted that woman's husband is because she wanted his farm. She didn't really want the man. She wanted his farm. You know what the woman did? While they were away, she burned the whole thing down. <laughs> she burned her house down. She burned her barn down. And when the old woman came back with her husband, she said, I don't want you. Get out of here. She left, and then the woman got left with her husband, which is what she wanted, more than she wanted a house or a barn. <laughs> now, didn't that fit well? And so with us as children of God, as long as we've got Jesus, we've got enough. Mike Murdoch wrote a, wrote a song, you know, and he, he wrote down a statement, and he says, when you've got, if all you've got left is Jesus, you've got enough to start again. So it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You've got enough if you've got Jesus. So what I'm trying to tell you about banks crashing and all this, you know, I don't know what will happen. It'll be hard on me if banks crash. I, mean, I do payroll with banks, you know. I don't know. Uh, I do local banks, but I still, you know, I, I, it'd be tough. But you know what? My hope is not in the bank. 
My hope is in the Lord, and he knows how to take care of his children. So we're just going to keep our eyes on Jesus and, and not be fearful because fear doesn't come. That kind of fear. I want to have the fear of God, but man's the fear of men and things that can happen in this life are not profitable. They will only bring you down. So uh, in Revelation 14, 9 and 10, it says, And the angel, third angel, followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wrath of God, which is poured out without measure into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So taking the mark of the beast, please listen to me. If you're watching this on video, we got some people that do follow us and watch our programs. I want you to understand that if you happen to get left here, I, I'm, I'm believing none of you here, uh, you know, I believe you're getting your heart right with God and keeping it right with God, and you're going in the rapture. But tell your family, tell your kids, tell your friends that, aren't, that don't want to serve God, that are living in an ungodly lifestyle and you can't get them to come to Jesus now. Tell them not to take the mark of the beast. Because the mark of the beast is it's the, un, it's the unpardonable sin. Once you take the mark of the beast, you are forever doomed to hell. So if you got friends who think you're stupid for being a Christian, who will not listen to the gospel message of Jesus Christ, which is so free and so wonderful, and they're deceived by the devil, just say one more thing I've got to say before we close this conversation. If you get left here and you know that I'm gone, and maybe some other people that you know are Christians are gone, please know that what we told you is true. There is going to be a rapture. And then please know that the rest of what I'm telling you is true. That there is going to come a time in about three and a half, four years, ever how long it will be, and they're going to tell you that you have to take this mark in your hand or your forehead or you will not be able to buy or sell. Do not take that mark, even if it means you die. Because if you do take that mark, you will forever be doomed in hell. Tell them, tell them the ones that will not respond to the gospel message. Tell them the gospel first. Invite them to Jesus first. But if you can't get them to come to Jesus, then encourage them that no matter what, you know, when you take the mark, of, if you don't take the mark of the beast, you're going to die. You're going to die, but you're going to live eternally well with Jesus. If you do take the mark of the beast, you'll live temporarily, but you'll have eternal death in hell. So that's what the mark of the beast is all about. It's not going to be an option. It's not going to just be in Israel. It's going to be a monetary plan all over the whole world. And I'm telling you, it is going to be damning because it is the image of the beast somehow or another that is included in that number 666. We, everybody speculated all kinds of stuff about that. Don't speculate. Just know that God has it in charge and he knows who the Antichrist is. It's going to be a man, a human man, that's alive at this time, and he's going to be, his image is going to be uh, in that number somehow or another. We don't know completely. But you will receive his image upon you when you take that, and then you will be uh, totally, totally lost. You know, um, Revelation uh, 16 and 2 says, And the first went and poured out the vial. This, this is the, let me go back here. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Get that done. Okay. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 16. I've got it up there, just chapter 16, because these are the bowls that are going to be poured out during the tribulation period. Remember, we had vials and we had trumpets in the first half of the tribulation period and things happened. In this chapter, chapter 16 of Revelation, it's going to be in the second half of the tribulation period. And these angels are going to 
empty these bowls out on the earth and this kind of stuff is going to start happening. So this is worse. The first uh, three and a half years, these were bad, but these are gonna be worse than the original ones that were poured out. So I'm gonna begin in, in verse number two. It's uh, the first stage, this is the first uh, of the angels. Uh, let me see if I'm in the right place. Um, no, no I'm not. No I'm not, I don't wanna get there yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let me read this. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there was a noisome and grie grievous sower upon the man which had the mark of the beast. So this is still about the mark of the beast. So it's in this chapter, but it was different, different area there. Upon them that worshipped his beast. Now there will be people that refuse. Hallelujah. There are going to be people that refuse. I believe that some of those will be our children, our grandchildren, that don't get right with God that will get right because they've been taught the truth. So in Revelation 20 and four it says, and I saw thrones and sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. So here he, he sing, and for the word of God, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon his forehead nor in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So there's going to be believers who do not take the mark and they will actually have to die and they will give their lives for Jesus Christ. So thank God we know that God's gonna, you know, by the way, God's a God of mercy. There's always mercy and grace in our God. So even in the middle of terrible things, when all of this is going on, the gospel is still gonna be being preached. The revelation tells us in one place, the angels are gonna fly around in the sky preaching the gospel. I don't know if that's going to be something different or if it's going to be actual. I don't know how God's going to do that. I don't really care. I'm not going to be here. I just know there's going to be angels somehow or another flying around warning people. Anybody who takes the mark of the beast is going to know they're dooming their souls. There's not going to be people in ignorance that are just going to take the mark of the beast in ignorance. God is going to shout out the, the message, shout out the truth. Don't take this, don't worship this beast or you will be doomed. The word will be out there because God is a gracious God and a loving God and he is going to warn the people so that they don't ignorantly end up in hell because God is good. So there'll be many people who will die during this time. So, we don't know what it is completely, but we know it's going to happen. Now we're going to go to Revelation 16, the bold judgments. In Revelation 16, verse 2, I just read that. That's why I got confused a little bit. Revelation 16 and 2, it says, And the first went and poured out his vial, or his bowl, is what it's called in, in, in the studies I've done, poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome, grievous sore, upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image. Oh yeah, God knows. People say, how's God gonna be sure the right people go in the rapture? Because God knows. And when these grievous sores and boils come out on people, he's gonna bring it out. That bile, that bowl is gonna be poured out on people. These grievous sores and boils are only going to be on the people who have re received the mark of the beast. That's kind of like in Egypt. When the blood was on the doorpost, God always exempted, or when Israel over there in Goshen, God exempted them from the plagues that he put on Egypt. And so it's going to be during the tribulation that he's going to exempt the people who have not received the mark of the beast and they will not have these grievous sores. These things may encourage them. You know, if, if everybody else that took the mark's got a bunch of horrible sores and boils on them, and I don't, and I see other people that didn't take the mark of the beast, that might be a little measure of encouragement, right? To say, man, I, I think I'm better off. <laughs> I may not be able to buy anything to eat, and I may starve to death, but I'm better off than walking around like that, suffering. So those horrible sores and grievous sores are going to be poured out upon people. In verse 3 it says, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Wow. 
Can you imagine? You know, you know, right now, because of they say because of those big wind generator things they're putting out in the Gulf, I mean, not out in the Gulf, out in the ocean there up in the Northeast, huge whales. Have y'all seen that on TV? Big, huge, humongous whales are, are being uh, washed up on the beaches. <sighs> well, they're, they're huge. Those things weigh tons and tons. So one of them trying to get that thing back out into the sea or whatever they have to do so it doesn't just totally decay and stink up everything. Can you imagine? Well, could you imagine the whole beaches loaded with dead things coming out of the sea? Can you imagine it? The Bible says the sea is going to turn into blood. And everything that's living in the sea is going to die. Can you imagine how horrible the stench and the filthiness of all that going on? That uh, oceanside property won't be so great anymore. <laughs> all right. And then it says, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. Hey, Eddie, how you like that side? Aren't you glad you're not going to be here? <laughs> when people turn on their water faucets, and not just a little red, discolored water that they gripe about right now coming out. Pure blood. Did Moses do that too? Yes, he did. Pure blood coming out of the fountains and the rivers. That's where we get our water, you know, out of wells and out of rivers and lakes is where we get our water and pure blood coming out when they turn on their water. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O God, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. And they have shed the blood, listen to this, this is God's judgment, why? Because they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Whoa, why is he giving them blood? Because they have persecuted God's people. They have shed the blood of, of the godly people. So God's given them blood to drink. I'm telling you what, saints, we should appreciate and be so thankful for all of our blessings. Because God has blessed us because why? Because we serve him. We don't have blood on our hands. We're not cruel and fighting against God, and God has blessed us. We should count our blessings for the goodness of God. It's the water that comes out of your faucet is a blessing from God. Amen. All right. I, I, that's amazing. I, I don't think I'd ever seen it quite like that before. They shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. Wow. That's, that just blows my mind. And then it says, for they're worthy. They're worthy to get the blood because of the evil they have done. Then verse 8, And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Y'all just think it gets hot in August. <laughs> and men were scorched with great heat, and they repented and were so sorry. All right. No. They were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Boy, I tell you, we are so cocky. When we're not serving Jesus and, 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 and walking in humility, man left to himself is cocky and smart aleck. Oh, God, I don't want any part of this spirit, do you? I don't want any part of this evil spirit in my heart, in my life. But they didn't repent, didn't make them repent. Burning the fire down on you, you know, uh, scorching sun is not pleasant. Then it says in verse number 12 to, six, 12 to 16, 
And the sixth angel poured out, of, poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Now that's up there in Iran, I mean in uh, Iraq, up there in that part of the world, there's a river, two rivers, the Euphrates and the Tigris, that uh, come together there. And so on this great river Euphrates, the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Who's the dragon? Satan. Satan. And out of the mouth of the beast. Who's the beast? The Antichrist. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. He's the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils. Y'all getting this picture? This is tough. They, they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief, God is saying to him, uh, to us now. He's talking to us now. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. So this vial is going to be poured out so that the way can be prepared for the great armies to come from those areas like China and Russia, India, that area of the world, a huge, huge army. Uh, the populations of these countries are so huge and they're going to form the greatest army that's ever been formed to come down through this dry riverbed of the Euphrates River that God is going to dry up. It's not dry right now, but it will be then. And then in verse 17 through 21, and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne. This is from God, from the throne in heaven. From the throne saying, it is done. And there were voices, thunders, and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. Listen to this. Such as was not since man were upon the earth. <laughs> An earthquake bigger than anything anybody has ever seen since man was upon the earth. Whoa, some kind of an earthquake that's going to be. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nation, that's, that's Jerusalem. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away. Every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell upon man a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Oh, brother, what a chaotic. I mean, whole nations are going to be torn apart. The great city, Jerusalem, will be broken up into three pieces. There will be chasms in the earth that will separate continents. Chaos, like, is just beyond our comprehension. Amen. Do you think God is able to, to shake the world? <laughs> well, he created it. <laughs> I think if he made it, he can shake it. And he's going to shake it. I'm telling you. This is bringing us to the end of this three and a half years. <coughs> and, and it won't be long. And, and as we go forward from this end of this tribulation, this great tribulation, you're going to see God step on the scene. Now God's been in control all the time and ultimately today just to let you know right now men may raise their stubborn necks but God is the one who has the last word Amen. now there are things that happen that God doesn't doesn't love like people have free will 
to do stupid things. He's willing that all should come to know God. That's what God is willing. But that's not going to happen, and we know that. And these people who exalt themselves against God right now today, they don't know it, but they're beating their head against a brick wall. Amen. Because it's not going to do them any good. Ultimately, it may do them a temporary, temporary good. They may, they may get a lot of power, a lot of wealth, a lot of things right now. But one of these days, everything they have will be of no value. No value at all. They're going to lose. But we, but we yeah. are on the winning side. So the next thing I want to remind you, now all of this we've been talking about during the tribulation period happens after the rapture of the church. So we who serve Jesus in the moment and a twinkling of an eye are going to be caught away forever to be with the Lord. We're not going to be looking down here crying over what's going on in the world. We're not. All those people there, people have crazy ideas about heaven. You're not going to be in your little private family circle up there. We're all going to be one, one bride. One bride. You know, I know we'll know as we're known, but that does not necessarily mean I'm going to know my mom and daddy, who they used to be on the earth. God's got a perfect plan and a perfect way for creation to live. Now, the people that are alive on the new earth, as we're going to talk about as we get into it, they'll have families. And we'll rule over them. Righteous rule for the first time on this planet. Righteous rule all over this whole world because Jesus will be the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we will serve in his kingdom over the natural people that are on this earth forever. So we've got a great future, church. Amen. Just one minute after the rapture, it'll be worth it all. So don't give up and don't quit. We're supposed to not be ignorant. We're supposed to know what's going to happen. Doesn't do you any good to put your head in the sand and act like things are going to, they're going to happen. But God, but God, yeah. Amen. we're going to be okay. Yeah. And you know, all we can do is encourage others to know Jesus. We cannot force anybody. You pray the main thing. You pray for those that are lost. That's the best thing you can do is pray. If God gives you an open door, you share Jesus. That's all you can do because each person has the freedom to choose. And they may be the people you love the most in this world who get left behind, but one minute after the rapture, you're not going to be weeping over them. You're not. Not going to be old bawling and squalling when you get to heaven. You're not even going to know. You're not going to know. You don't be a part of that anymore. We're going to be a part of a new earth, new heaven one of these days, but we're going to be with Jesus. For that seven years where all these horrible things are going on, we're going to be with Jesus. How in the world could we ever want to look down here and see what's going on? Okay, well, that brings us to the end of the second half of the tribulation, the great tribulation, and we will start on those events that are going to bring us all the way through to the new earth and the eternal glory of the reign of God just in a few weeks.